Hi, I'm Jervis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up iOS Mail if you've previously created an email account on Plesk 12. We're going to go through the relatively daunting process. It uh, sadly isn't all to discover. Uh, there are a lot of settings that you need to keep in mind, and we're going to go through how this works on an iPad running iOS 8. All email clients, regardless if it's an iOS app or another external client, require the following things. One is a URL for the incoming mail server. Usually if you're hosting a domain in Plesk, that is something like domain.com or yourdomain.com. Sometimes it's also mail.yourdomain.com or it is something specific that you received from your hosting provider. Sometimes they have one server for the web traffic and one for the email traffic, but if it's handled by the same server, then yourdomain.com should be fine. Obviously not your domain, but your domain. You know what I mean. If you want to communicate with your server via SSL, which is highly recommended, that is a secure protocol, then you need to also specify a port, which for the incoming mail server is port 993. There are several ways for your machine, for your iPad, your iPhone, your iOS device to shake hands with your Plesk server, and the method that works well is password. So authentication type needs to be set to password. It's a little bit involved and it's all going to become clear the moment we look at how to do this on the iPad. Likewise for the outgoing mail, so this is the mail that's being sent from your iPad to your Plesk server via the Plesk server to someone else, that also requires a URL, the outgoing mail server URL, sometimes also called SMTP, and that is usually the same thing as the incoming mail server if mail and web traffic is handled by the same server, so it's again your domain.com. For the authentication, we need the same protocol if you want to use SSL, which we recommend. And so then the authentication type is password, but the SSL port is something different. It's 587. That is often discovered appropriately, but sometimes the iPad just gets it wrong or the iPhone or the iOS device. So therefore, always good to check. Outgoing mail via port 587. You also need your username, which is the full email that you've created, so your email at yourdomain.com. It's not just the first part, your email. It has to be the full part, your email at yourdomain.com. And of course, you need the password that you've set up in Plesk. iOS supports a couple of protocols to talk to the server. One of them is IMAP and the other one is POP. POP is to be avoided in this day and age because POP doesn't remember what you've done to your email. So the emails that you've read should be marked as read on all devices and IMAP will take care of that. So choose IMAP if at all possible. Uh, POP is something that was great 30 years ago, but it's it really is no longer applicable to us. But iOS supports it, which is great. Uh, but if you are using Plesk and if you are using iOS, then go ahead and use IMAP. IMAP also has something called a folder prefix, which in our case needs to be inbox. That is sometimes discovered, sometimes it isn't, so it's something to be aware of, and I will show you how to set up all these things on your iPad running iOS 8. It's the same process on iOS 7 and on iOS 6, even on iOS 5, nothing has changed there. Here's our iPad, and to add a new email account, you head over to settings, so that's that gray tab with a little cock thing here that says settings. In that long list of all kinds of interesting stuff, head over to Mail, Contacts and Calendars, this one here. And tap on it and you should see a list of accounts currently installed. So these are all my email accounts that I've currently got on my iPad. If I want to add a new one, I'll hit Add Account. And then from this long list of predefined services, you select Other which will take you to the next screen. It's another selection screen. What type of account would you like to add? In our case, we're interested in a mail account, so that's the first one up here, add mail account. And the window that pops up will ask you for some preliminary details. You can configure them all, you can change them all. Uh, we're just gonna follow. Yeah, my name is indeed John Appleseed. It's brilliant. And the email is the email address that you've set up. So in my case, that was a test account. And the password was the password that we've created in Plesk and the description will automatically be selected, but if you'd like to change it, you can right here. Here's a little tip that makes, especially on iPhone devices where typing isn't that easy on the keyboard, if you have a fairly long, convoluted, complex domain, you could just copy that while you're here, because you will need to paste this a lot, but that's optional. Hit next, 
and iOS will try and discover the email settings for this server. It is not successful here, so we need to give it some more details. This is the selection here, IMAP and POP. It's defaulting to IMAP, and please leave that. I wouldn't recommend POP in this day and age anymore. So the incoming mail server that we talked about is in fact your domain. So in my case, that is just filetranscoder.com. And this is the first time where this pasting has come in handy. Username is indeed the full email address, so testing at mydomain.com. Again, paste comes in handy. Password comes pre-populated, that's the one that I've entered earlier, which is good. And then on the outgoing mail server, we have the same thing. So we, uh, we also need our domain down here. There we go. And the username, again, that's my full email address. Thank God for cut paste. And the password, just like before. Hit next. And we're getting this little warning here that the server, the domain can't be identified. This is something where iOS is trying to communicate with the server via a secure protocol and it detects that there is no SSL certificate installed on this domain. If I had, then this message wouldn't come up. iOS, however, is clever enough that if I say continue, this warning should go away. I will get this warning a second time for the outgoing mail server. So this one was the warning for the incoming mail server and the outgoing mail server is using the same domain and hence I will get the same warning, but only once on iOS. And there we go, second warning, hit continue. And it looks like iOS is fairly happy. We're only having an email account, so we don't have a notes account. So let's switch that one off and hit save. And this has now added my account to the list of other email accounts that I've got on iOS. Before we head over into the mail app and see what this looks like, there's a few other things that we need to quickly check how well or not so well they have been pre-configured. So let's select that test account again, find it at the top here, click on it again. And we can now check some of the advanced options. Perhaps I need to use portrait for this. There we go. Scroll down to the bottom here and you find these two tabs, outgoing mail server and advanced. Let's go to advanced first. And on the bottom, you can find the SSL port that's being used. So in my case, that is correct, 993. The IMAP path prefix was not pre-discovered. So I need to quickly go in here and tell it that this was inbox all capital letters, very important. If you don't do that, then you won't be able to move messages between folders. We're gonna talk about folders in a moment. Also good to check is the incoming settings use SSL. Yes, we'd like to do that. At the same time, the authentication method needs to be password. So this is correct here, but it may not always be correctly discovered. So sometimes this is set to MB5 challenge response, uh, which Plesk can't really handle. So uh, make sure this is set to password. Head back to this page here and select the outgoing mail server primary server. These are all my other servers that I've got currently installed on my device. I'm interested in the top one here. Let's click on that and just make sure these settings are correctly set. So in our case they are. It looks like use SSL is switched on. Authentication method is set to password but if it isn't please change it to password and server port 587 is also correct for the outgoing mail server. Just you know a couple of things to check. If those aren't correct then please correct them. I'm going to hit done and let's have a look at our account in the mail app. Mail is down here and in your home screen in the list of email accounts, find your test account down here. So this will greet you with a few folders and one of them is inbox and drafts deleted and so forth. They may be different here. Um, inbox is of course your proper inbox. I currently don't have any mail so maybe I will send myself some in a moment. These other folders here, iOS calls them mailboxes, just like the mail app on the Mac. And this is a little bit confusing because really they're not email accounts as such, they are just folders on IMAP. So if you click on edit up here, then you can add your own or even delete the ones that are there. So if I create another one here, new mailbox, then I can pick a location here where this is. So I want this to be on my test account and I'm gonna call it uh, test folder. Ah, test folder looks like it already exists, so I can't create that one. Maybe I'll call it test folder number two. There we go, and indeed, test folder was, was already there. 
you can move messages between these folders. So you could move something from an inbox and file it away. And you can even have folders inside other folders to organize your email. But there's one other thing that you can do, uh, which is you can map the, f the existing folders to certain functions on your iPad. For example, if you go back into the settings app, where we've just been and set up our account. We're still there on mail, contacts, and calendars. Click on your email account in question. And again, better in portrait. Head back to advanced. You see this top section here, mailbox behaviors. You can ask the iPad to save certain things in certain IMAP folders so that they're synced across all devices and so that it makes sense. So right now, sent mailbox isn't mapped. If we click on it, you can see that by default, the sent items are stored on your iPad. That's not necessarily what you want. You may want your sent items to be stored in a folder called sent items or just sent on the IMAP server, for example, here. And this menu lets you map this. So let's select that. Instead of storing sent messages only on my iPad and I won't be able to see them on my iPhone, I'm gonna pick this one here, sent, delete it, I'm going to put that into maybe my deleted folder. So then in case I delete an email on my iPad, I can still retrieve it on my Mac or on my iPhone. And archive, I don't really use archive, but just to be sure, I'm also going to map that to the deleted folder on my, on my server. One other thing you can do here, iOS clears out deleted emails after one week by default, but of course you can change that and make it a month. There, that's that. Done and done. Let's go back to the mail app and send ourselves some mail and see if this is working. Okay, I'm sending myself an email from the iCloud account, or from one of my many iCloud accounts, and we'll see if it arrives on the test account. Hey, there we go, that was quick. Fantastic. Maybe I'll reply. Great, that's done. And I can check in my send items if my response is in fact copied there. And it has indeed, that's perfect. But if I wanted to, I can go and edit this, touch it, and on the bottom here, you can move it to any of the other folders you've created. Now I'll put it in my test folder number two. So now it's no longer in the sent items, but if I head over to the test folder, then there it is. John Appleseed, that's me, my alias. Anyway, uh, let's head over to my iCloud account here and see if my response has arrived. It has indeed, look. Great, looks like it's all working. I hope this gentle introduction to how to run mail from Plesk on your iOS device was helpful. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to check out all my other videos about all kinds of techie stuff, including iOS development, if you're interested in that. Bye for now. I'll see you next time.